Brothers and sisters, today we look to India, who has shown us that even without the weight of empires, a nation can build its own future if India can create the chip that powers tomorrow. Then Burkina Faso too can rise from the Sahel with knowledge, with courage, and with unity. This is not only about technology, it is about sovereignty. Together with our allies, we will no longer follow, we will lead. He has a young captain who sees power into O22 and just inked sweeping deals that could reshape a continent. Imagine Burkina Faso's fields turning golden factories humming where silence once reigned. All thanks to a partnership with India. But there's more to this story. A man echoing Sankara's legacy, a bold regional alliance, and a fight for sovereignty. We're about to dive in, and just wait until you see how culture and politics collide in unexpected ways next. In a flash, Captain Ibrahim. Shot from obscurity to headline-making leader. He toppled the prior regime in late 2022 and went straight into action expelling foreign troops, renegotiating resource deals, and reviving industries so that the country could feed itself, build roads, even assemble electric vehicles. This wasn't just politics, it was a statement. We do it ourselves, we feed ourselves. But how did a guy once off the radar become a rallying point for Pan-African hope? Stick around, we'll see how culture and national pride became his secret power. Instead of speeches, he builds mausoleums and revives film festivals. Tapped into the power of local memory rebirthing a mausoleum for revolutionary icon Thomas Sankara, designed by Francis, uh, and reviving Fespaco, West Africa's biggest cinema fest. These weren't just cultural nods, they were symbols. Stamps of a new narrative that rejects colonial hangovers. But these symbols serve more than aesthetics. They help rally hearts and states. Up next, how Burkina Faso is linking arms with neighbors in India to solidify economic independence. Is forging new partnerships, not with old powers but with peers. India has deep history with Burkina Faso sending tractors and experts in the 1990s, launching lines of credit for tomato plants, housing, rural electrification, and training centers under schemes like Team 9 and the pan african -E Network. Now, this diplomatic backdrop powers his new deal, picture expanded training, strategic aid, localized factories, and a shared vision for self-reliance. But these aren't happening in a vacuum. Next, we'll see how regional unity fits into the playbook. Burkina Faso didn't stop at bilateral ties. It joined regional siblings Mali, Niger to build the alliance of Sahel State SAES, a shared flag, a confederal investment bank, cultural identity, and collective security, all keystones of a strategy to break free from old power structures. Imagine three nations pooling resources for their future. But economic integration isn't enough if there's no stability. Up next, arms, drones, and the uneasy balance between sovereignty and violence. With insurgencies growing, turn two arms transfers mostly drones from Turkey, along with Russian surveillance aircraft and helicopters. They ramped up military power but also sparked backlash civilian casualties, propaganda, even criticism that this road might undermine regional stability. Yet, in the face of U.S. critique and suspected coup plots, mass rallies, erupted, thousands flooded Ouagadougou chanting long live. A show of loyalty so intense it felt like love. This raises a hard question. Can symbolism, security, and populism hold a country together? We'll get to that, but first, let's revisit how these new deals tie back to the vision of self-reliance. As progressive and popular revolution named to echo Sankara's rolls out sweeping reforms, state control of gold, cancellation of debt, building factories, tractors for farmers, tomato plants, and more. He suspended the constitution and called it not a democracy, but a revolution. He's flipped land policy favoring rural communities. Over multinationals and rolled agricultural machinery across farms. From Ref IPL to electric cars, this is industrial birth. But while supporters praise his vision, critics fear democratic erosion and growing violence. Speaking of violence, 19000 lives lost since he took power, insurgencies growing. This is where power meets peril. As popularity stems from bold moves expelling French troops, reclaiming resources, building for the people, protesters from Africa to Jamaica held banners begging the West to leave him alone, but democracy should have checks, 
elections postponed to 2029, allegations of human rights abuses, forced conscription. Some fear that the very revolution fueling support could spiral into isolation. So, can this movement sustain itself on grit, guns, and goodwill? The answer may not come from politics, but from identity. What began as a revolt by a young captain is evolving into a grand bet on South-South unity. Is crafting a story where culture, self-reliance, regional banking, agriculture, and partnerships with nations like India form the backbone of Burkina Faso's new chapter. It's messy, it's daring, it's being watched by young Africans hoping for a different future and by old powers wondering who is next to break away, whether this revolution becomes a sustainable nation-building force or phrase under pressure remains the question. But one thing is clear, Ibrahim. Estil isn't e just about Burkina Faso. It's about rewriting the rules of how weaker nations can stand tall together, and that's where the real story lies. But here's where the story takes an even sharper turn. While India's first semiconductor chip is a symbol of technological independence in Asia, Burkina Faso is watching closely, for this is more than a headline, it's a blueprint. If India can break free from dependency on Western or Chinese chips, why can't Africa develop its own micro-industries, tailored to its needs? The question has become a rallying cry across universities in Ouagadougou, where students chant that Africa, too, must own the code, own the chip, own the future. Now, picture this. In a dusty classroom in Bobo de Olasso, young engineers huddle around laptops, running training programs connected through India's Pan-African e-network. What they're studying is not just software, it's the language of sovereignty. Every lesson is another crack in the wall of dependency, and just like India built. Its IT backbone in the 90s, Burkina Faso dreams of building a Sahel-based knowledge economy in the 2030s. But let's pause here. Why does a semiconductor chip matter so much to Burkina Faso? After all, it doesn't yet have a high-tech industry. The answer lies in control. Chips are the heart of drones, smartphones, medical devices, and even the tractors that is rolling out to rural farms. Whoever controls the chip controls the tools of tomorrow. For a leader obsessed with sovereignty, this is the ultimate prize. And here's where geopolitics centers the stage. The West is watching. China is watching, Russia is watching. But so too is India keen to project itself not just as a global South ally, but as a technology partner. Indian officials have hinted at expanding semiconductor training programs in Africa, and Burkina Faso's diplomats are quietly negotiating to secure their slice. Imagine the symbolism, Africa's first chip fabrication lab rising in Ouagadougou, under a South-South banner, unrealistic. Maybe. But that's exactly how revolutions begin with impossible dreams. Still, dreams collide with reality. Burkina Faso faces one of the world's deadliest insurgencies. More than two million people are displaced, villages empty, schools closed. Critics argue that investing in chips or high-tech industries is pointless when basic security isn't guaranteed. Responds differently. In speeches, he insists that self-reliance must go hand in hand with security. If we only fight, we survive. But if we build, we live, he said at a recent rally. The crowd roared back his words like scripture. But there's another twist. Culture again. Remember how. Used film festivals and mausoleums to cement national identity. Now he's turning to technology as the new cultural battleground. At the last Fespaco festival, not only were films screened but young inventors showcased solar-powered microchips carved in makeshift labs. Symbolic? Yes, functional. Barely, but powerful as a message. Technology is no longer foreign, it is African. Here's where it all ties together. India as semiconductor launch gives. And his allies a concrete example 2.2 when they talk about the future. It's proof that nations outside the West can lead in cutting-edge industries. The alliance is not about Burkina Faso becoming the next Silicon Valley overnight. It's about planting the idea that Africa can be more than a mine for cobalt, uranium, or gold. It can be a producer of the technologies that define tomorrow. Of course, this story has its shadows. Analysts warn that leaning too heavily on symbolism without deep economic reform could backfire. Factories may open but struggle to stay. Afloat, military spending made rain budgets meant for education, and authoritarian controls risk silencing dissenting voices that could offer solutions. 
In other words, S. Bold Leap could either cement his legacy as a second Sankara or unravel into a cautionary tale, yet for millions of young Africans, hope matters more than cynicism, across TikTok and Twitter, memes compare. To Sankara with slogans like the captain builds where others beg, videos of his speeches rack up millions of views, and in every clip there's the same undercurrent, belief that this time things could be different. And so, the India Burkina Faso story isn't just about technology or even politics, it's about narrative. A narrative where two nations from the global south refuse to wait for permission, one launches a chip, the other launches a revolution, both signal to the world that history is not written only in Washington, Paris, or Beijing. It is also being written in Ouagadougou and Bangalore. The final question lingers, can this South-South partnership survive the storms ahead? Security threats, economic hurdles, global pressure all loom large. But if there's one thing has mastered, it's turning obstacles into rallying points. And if India's chip is any sign, perhaps the tools of sovereignty are closer than skeptics think.